Well, uh, welcome everyone. Um, I'm Professor Rebecca Russell-Bennett, uh, the co-director for the Centre for Behavioural Economics, Society and Technology. And we're one of the hosts for today's session, along with um, the Centre for Digital Economy. And if we could just have everyone's microphones off, that would be great. Thank you. Um, the co-hosts today are the Centre for Behavioural Economics, Society and Technology, the School of Advertising, Marketing and Public Relations, and the Centre for uh, Digital Economy at QUT. Um, and so we're really pleased um, to uh, have the risk quite an overwhelming response. In fact, this is a sold out event. Um, and uh, very pleased to introduce uh, two of our um, fantastic research students. Um, we have uh, Alexandra Zimbabu, who is um, a Master of Philosophy student um, here at QUT. And we have Chelsea Phillips, who is one of our PhD students. Um, she's a double degree uh, PhD with uh, QUT and Maastricht University in the Netherlands. Both of these students um, uh, come from a, a high achieving marketing background and bring together skills in marketing and also importantly, visual design. Um, and it's really through my interactions with uh, supervising both of these students that I realised that they've got some really fantastic skill sets that I was keen to learn. And when I noted this to them, they actually said that, well, they'd actually had a few other people comment on some of the uh, ways that they were using, particularly the, the Miro tool. And um, so the idea to bring this session was born. So I'm now going to hand over to... Uh, again, could we just have the microphones turned off, please? I, someone, someone's unmiked. Sam, perhaps if you could just mute everyone. That would be great. Okay, so I'm happy to hand over to Chelsea and uh, Alex, um, who are going to show us the wonderful world of uh, Miro and uh, how we can use it to um, get, a, get a handle on, on the research that, um, that we do and uh, learn some creativity skills in the process. So uh, over to you, um, Alex and Chelsea. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks so much for that introduction, Rebecca. Um, hey, everyone. It's great to have you all here. Um, Alex and I are super excited to kind of share this tool and how it's been super helpful um, in our research journey, uh, but also reflecting how this is really applicable to industry and is a great tool overall for everyone to have in their skill set, no matter where they end up. Um, so yeah, as I said before, I'm Chelsea, I'm a PhD student and Alex here is a master's student. Um, and what we've done is we've just popped in the chat a little link um, to this mirror board you're seeing right now that we're screen sharing uh, because we really want this to be a collaborative workshop. So we're all actually gonna be operating off the same mirror board. We figured we might as well practice what we preach and actually jump on mirror itself. Um, and it's great to already see the many mouses <laughs> moving. So we encourage you all to get along and jump in. Definitely. So um, yes, as uh, Rebecca mentioned before, this um, workshop is a part um, of a series of the AMPR series um, run by the Best Centre and also the Centre for Digital Economy. If you wanted to read more about uh, these centres and what they do, we've provided some links here, um, just as some promo as well. Now, in terms of this workshop, first of all, if you get motion sickness, I apologise in advance, we're going to be zooming in and out of this whole um, session. Uh, but we really want you to embrace the experience and the adventure of this workshop. Um, if you zoom out and have a look at the slides, you can see them from the outset, which is the beauty of Miro. Um, but this is definitely not a linear journey, which we kind of love, but it really does embody uh, the purpose of this workshop to embrace ambiguity. And so you'll explore different pathways of this workshop. While we do have a set narrative, um, we definitely go off and up and down and explore um, certain things in detail for sure. So be sure to embrace that journey. You may even cruise yourself. Uh, we've designed this workshop also to be either an interactive or kind of watching scenario. So we definitely think that deep diving and getting into Miro board as we're going along, you'll benefit the most from in learning it. But we do also understand that it could be quite a daunting software um, if you don't typically venture into these kinds of things. So then you're more than welcome to just sit back and watch as we explore and um, collaborate uh, as we go along. Uh, we'd also love to embrace the full functionality of Miro. We think there's no point in you know, just diving off to Zoom if we're really actually trying to explore every functionality aspect. So you'll notice down here uh, that there is actually a chat function um, in Miro. So we'd love to hear your comments, queries and whatnot. Um, one of us will be monitoring it as we go uh, to address any concerns whatsoever. 
And best of all, uh, mirror is definitely something you learn through play. Uh, I think during the process of designing this workshop, we've definitely taught each other uh, different uh, skill sets that we actually didn't know Mirror had. Um, and so we really do encourage you to really just kind of take the initiative to explore. Um, you really can't break Miro, uh, touch wood, um, not in this workshop. Um, and it's a really kind of intuitive platform. So we have set activities, so feel free to make the most of it, but also post this workshop, use the content here, uh, this mirror board isn't going away, to really get the most out of your learning experience and just try it for yourself. It's the best way to learn. So. All right, so the agenda for today. Um, we'll start off just by looking at the basic functionalities of Miro. Um, before kind of deep diving into the technical understanding. So we'll also have a bit of a short break in between, give you a chance to stretch your legs, grab a quick coffee or anything like that. Um, and then looking at taking a uh, shift from a linear way of thinking into a design thinking approach. So really looking at mind mapping and using Miro for the entire research process. Um, we'll then go into also looking at the applications for Miro um, in terms of industry. So looking at human centered design and the um, toolkit availabilities really, and then wrap up and grab some feedback from you all. So we do want to definitely stress that this is an introductory course. So if you are an expert, cut us some slack, but if you are new, then um, we are excited to show you guys um, some of the best features of the, of the tool. So to get us started, um, just a quick background. So what is Miro? So um, it essentially is whatever you need it to be. It's, it can be a blank canvas. Um, it's really a visual design tool that you can incorporate, um, ha have that collaboration from that physical, physical whiteboard into moving that into a digital space. So it's great to interact with virtual teams. It's also a really great tool for that mind mapping process. There's plenty of um, collaboration functionality, so you can add some comments, say, hey Charles, and then tag, tag your friends. If they come up, there she is. <laughs> um, so there's plenty of communication just integrated within, really built in. Um, so it is a very intuitive platform. Um, there are also plenty of options for user testing. So if that's something uh, you're looking at designing some wireframes or getting feedback with participants throughout the research process, there's definitely some functionality available for that too. Um, Miro also has a couple of interesting, um, so it's really driven from the human-centered design. So it does have templates and um, plenty of functionality to respond to the entire innovation process from ideation to solution design. So let's deep dive a little bit further. Pass it on to you, Charles. Awesome. So kind of exploring why we choose Miro personally and professionally in kind of navigating different softwares and that kind of thing. Ultimately, I think we were discussing that it really comes down to usability and that there definitely are um, software available that do achieve similar outcomes. However, it's this we found is the most user friendly, it's the most adaptable, so you can export things to PDF, to JPEGs and whatnot. And it's also the most collaborative in terms of you all jumped on here as guests and are able to completely immerse yourselves in the experience. Um, you know, other platforms may request that you have a premium account by default or that your guests can just simply view and can't really touch anything. So we found this to be the most, have the lowest barrier to entry, um, you could say, um, and really do embrace it in a lot of what we do. Now, to get started and to kind of assess um, everyone's level of expertise, we're going to set up a poll. And as we said, we learn through practicing ourselves. So there'll be some things that we show you in a more organic way that we wouldn't necessarily do in like a very, very formal workshop because we want you to learn the experience ourselves. So I'm going to show you the process of how we can set up a poll for voting this evening. So I love seeing all the activity around here. Uh, what we're going to do, just a heads up, this is a premium account, so there's certain things we can and can't do um, with a premium. But we have down here the ability to vote. So I'm going to click this. This is one for later. I'm going to create a voting session. Um, voting, whoop. I'm just reloading that one. Classic. <laughs> we love that. Apologies there, everyone. 
that's another functionality of Mira. I think when people jump on, it gets a bit overwhelming. Um, just going to wait for it to load. Okay, perfect. The voting, I create a voting session, but just say the voting too, I think it freaks you out a bit. We will um, have the duration of the voting session to be one minute. I don't think we need any more. Um, one minute. One minute. Yeah. <laughs> I'll put a, a zero there for one minute. Um, we want people to have one vote per person, so we'll reduce that right down. And the cool thing about Miro is that it is so intuitive and you are really able to customise it. So the voting area, I don't want people clicking on the whole board. That actually doesn't generate a lot of meaning. So um, what we're going to do, it loads, this is incredible. Okay. I'm going to do this fast, is change the area. And I want people just to focus on this board right here. And I only want people to select the sticky notes. Start now. I want people to vote now. So what you can do is you can actually click on each voting post-it note. Um, if you kind of get your attention up here, there should be a vote now button. We can go through and vote how um, familiar you are with Miro. So you can be quite advanced, being like, I came here to flex my skills. Mm -hmm. um, be quite honest about that. You can be pretty confident about Miro using Miro. Um, maybe you're further down the scale in terms of not so confident um, in terms of I know, know a little bit about Miro, um, or maybe further down the line, I can tell I tell people that I use Miro, but I don't know what I'm doing, or first time using it, uh, that kind of thing. So I'm going to place my vote. Definitely claim here to flex my skills, 100%. Uh, it's going to have a moment there. Come on, right now. I think we're about to vote Miro. <laughs> so, has everybody placed their vote? I think we're having a bit of an issue. Maybe we're too ambitious. <laughs> okay. I think it keeps sucking out, but what we'll do to keep moving on, and um, this, I'll be admit this is the first time we're getting a lot of people onto it. But basically what you can do is you can vote. It's just kind of what we might do. Uh, Chelsea, if you have a big screen, so uh, the voting um, appears in the top right hand corner and I didn't notice it when I was looking at ah. the right. So if you've got a really big screen, look in your top right hand corner and that's where you can click to vote. Oh, okay, perfect. Um, I think it's just having a bit of a moment right now, which is also maybe we need to reset it. So. Apologies, we might just stop share and um, address some of the things Miro is doing right now. Sometimes we can get a bit overwhelmed. Is anyone else having some issues with what they see? I might jump across to mine. <laughs> um, looking like that on yours as well. Yeah, yeah I'll just jump back in. It's just going a bit slow. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. It got there eventually with my clicks. Okay, I think we're back. Uh, awesome. Are we back on? I'm going to start sharing. Yeah, just might wait for it to load. Awesome. I think we're back on, back and rolling. Okay, cool. I can probably show you, I won't try again, yeah, just well. so we can keep the momentum of this workshop going. But basically, it's a very cool function in that you can select any series of shapes, post-it notes and whatnot. Um, and you can essentially enable those when once clicked to enter a voting system and whatnot. Um, so I appreciate everyone who's added manual post-it notes. That has helped the process immensely. Yeah. Um, in that a little bit of knowledge can be dangerous. I love that. I use it for my teaching, I love it, fantastic. 
and you've used Mural a lot, so um, an alternate software. So you'll probably find a lot of similarities in terms of usability with this. Um, fantastic. So um, if we kind of want to familiarise ourselves before we get like too technical, um, for those who have used Miro, it can be very confusing understanding almost the content hierarchy of the software in that, um, you know, what's the difference between a team and an account and a, a project and whatnot. And basically, if you have your own account, you can put, you've probably explored this, but you have Miro itself, which I liken to just having a laptop or computer, that's the platform. And then what you can do is you can set up a team here. Um, and that basically allows you to apply like a premium subscription to it or add people to a team. Um, from there, you can have multiple projects within this team. So you can see mine um, right here that I've screenshotted. Um, we have teaching, that's a, a, a team that I have and I've applied a premium subscription to that. Um, you can also see various other teams I'm a part of. Um, they're just other students, I use this for teaching, so that's just other students' um, teams there that I need to go and delete. Um, and within this teaching team, I have different folders for the different projects I am. So I have one for Miro Workshop and I have one for my research. Then after that, um, you can have your various boards here. And this is where we're currently situated. We're on a board itself, which is obviously located in my Miro Workshop project in my team account kind of thing. And so when I read, I think we also get confused quite a bit in terms of like, oh, have you shared the board or have you shared like the account or what, what, what? Um, you can share, as um, Alex will go in further, you can share different projects, um, different boards. It just depends on the level of interaction and privacy you want as well. So I put my um, board in a project so that no one else could see my research, no one else could see my other folders and that kind of thing, which is a very useful tool to have. Awesome. All right. So we've warmed you guys up a little bit in terms of the usability of Miro. And now we want to get to know each other a little bit better. So hopefully this turns out okay and we don't um, have another absolute crash. Um, but to start us off, we thought we'd do one looking at where you were born. So all we need you to really do is hopefully have basic geography grasp, I'm assuming, <laughs> um, in terms of the audience. And then all we'd really want is a copy and paste function. So really just control um, C and then control V and just populate that wherever you're from. And one of the really cool features that we've actually found as well is um, a timer function. So I'm sure a, a lot of you have had experience facilitating your own workshops. And we all know, um, I, I suppose, that awkward intermission or that awkward break. So Mira actually has a functionality for a timer and it also has a functionality to pick your own music. So we What's that? Very, very excited about that. What? The window opens. Uh, yeah. Sorry, uh, yeah. if you don't mind just muting, please. Awesome. Copy the map. We all want a copy of the map, that's it. All right, I might just start off by playing some smooth groove music. I'll give you guys a couple of minutes to populate the map where you're from. So we're really excited to get to know you guys. Smooth groove, here we come. Hopefully you can all hear that okay. Yep. Good to see some, some people putting in some arrows as well. If, you, if you're wanting to show us where you've traveled from. Look, I, I, I was born in Romania actually, and then traveled across. So I might have a bit of a go as well, populating that too. While well, that smooth jazz is playing for us in the background.
pretty cool to see all of your mouse is moving around. So that's what, one of the really great features that we like about this platform. So we are inside. You can see Miro's at VC Sun. VC Sun. Miro is online. Was that a question or? No, he just no. Okay. <laughs> just checking. Awesome. Time's up. <laughs> and that seems to be a very pleasant timer as well, which is. Great, great usability again. <laughs> All right, awesome to see. So a lot of a lot of Aussies here, and some European representation. Really awesome stuff, guys. Might move on to the next icebreaker from there. Yeah. Awesome. So um, one of the fun functionalities that we realised was the ability to add gifts. Um, and just kind of a bit of creative flair to these um, workshops. So what we've got here is kind of a vibe check, you could say, about how we're feeling today. And the awesome part is, is that you can click on these and they actually play, um, which we think is a really great um, kind of component of the workshop. Um, you just have to make sure that no one clicks after, <laughs> which is awesome. So we kind of wanted to do a bit of a vibe check today in terms of where you're feeling, where you're at, um, by adding a post-it note to the area um, that you think you resonate with. So up here we've got the AOC, high energy, high workload, um, kind of really killing it. Um, so then we go here to low energy, high workload, where you just have um, a Parks of Rec gift. Um, really epitomizing when you have a lot to do and just not a lot of um, care to do it. Um, down here in the lower left, low energy, low workload, got nothing to do, that doesn't matter anyway, um, low energy. And then up here, another parts of rec gif, when you have high energy, um, low workload, so you're probably looking elsewhere for things to do. So simply just add your name to a post note and chuck it on in where you think you um, resonate. For two minutes? Yeah, I'll go some more smooth groove. Yes, yeah, smooth groove. Here we go. Awesome. <laughs> Great. And I might just check the chat and see if there's any comments. Ah, yes. Excellent point. Agreed. Yep. We'll just check that. Yeah, so while you're working, um, Ruth bit up a good um, question and slash point. Uh, if you do just want to view the facilitator or any person in particular's um, movements on the Miro board or anyone in particular, basically up here, um, if you see where I'm kind of uh, rotating my cursor, if you simply click on um, one person, so that's Alex, or if you wanted to follow me, um, if you click on them, it will automatically take you to their perspective and then you can view it um, and it will just kind of take you on a journey. So sometimes mirror boards get really big and you get very lost. You're like, where on earth is this person looking? You just click up there, it all makes sense from there. So really good point, Ruth. Yeah, so definitely the one we're driving off is just the A at the moment. So you need to follow that one along. <laughs> Um, and we'll definitely also, if this is something you guys are interested in, we're happy to show you actually how to insert those GIFs in or how to insert images into your workshops um, just to make them a little bit more interactive. Because I think we have all been there when workshops are called workshops, but... It's a lecture. Yes, it's a lecture. <laughs> um, so hopefully we can add a little bit of value to the way you guys work. Awesome, so get your votes in. Have a lot of high energy people, it's pretty pretty great to see. But also high workload, so. <laughs> That's fantastic. So, um, super cool, I'm loving the people who have low energy, low workload. That's awesome. Um, hope everyone who has low energy, high workload is doing okay this week. 
Um, I think a lot of us are kind of mentally in that area there. Um, but great to see people channeling uh, high energy, high workload, getting stuff done kind of week. Uh, definitely very cool, awesome activity. So we'll move, move on to our last icebreaker. And this is a personal favorite that I discovered <laughs> and was like, we must have it in this workshop. And basically I want you to grab a post-it note um, and not move the background. That's cool. Um, and basically um, pop down. Oh, thank you. <laughs> moved it back. Control Z works wonders. So yeah. if need be, please feel free to use it. <laughs> um, so I want you to pop on a post-it note, your favorite mythical creature. Um, we thought this was a quite an interesting one and we're, we're not too critical about what we constitute as a mythical creature, as someone pointed out before that, you know, the definition between fictional and mythical is quite blended. Um, so feel free to pop um, your favorite mythical creature there. Just gonna try and get no one touch the background. All right. Um, another cool feature, sorry, if anyone can just not touch the background for a second, I'll show you something. Perfect. So what you can do in workshops, and I thought what I did, um, is you can lock elements in there. So ideally no one can move it. Someone may have just unintentionally um, pressed a long click to unlock, but that's a really useful function if you have um, content that you don't want it to move. Um, or you don't want it to get deleted accidentally, you can actually lock certain elements in. So you can do that for frames and all different kinds of things. Definitely have some experts already in the workshops in terms of look at all those emojis. Great to see. Oh, pictures, yeah. excellent. One step ahead. <laughs> just killing it. Yeah. <laughs> On this politician. <laughs> <laughs> Very mythical. Awesome. Um, I'm loving this. Um, there's definitely a bit of diversity here. Um, and Niffler, incredible Kate, <laughs> Jabberwocky, awesome. I'm glad I'm glad everyone understood the brief. This is very <laughs> exciting. Um, just referencing a question actually that was put on Zoom. Um, from Jenna in terms of how do you bring up the music within the timer? Excellent question. So this is for premium. So if you have a freemium account, I'm not sure you'd be able to see this, but we have obviously the timer function just down here. You click on the timer um, and it's when you click on this music icon that you can select different uh, music options. You basically select one, press the timer and then off you go. It does it automatically, which is really great. And um, we definitely had a fun time perusing the different mm, um, audio. And we definitely, the great smooth groove was definitely the vibe of today. Oh but um, yeah, there's definitely more soothing or more upbeat options for you. And I, I suppose it just bypasses the whole opening up a YouTube tab and Googling the music. So it's just a quick built-in functionality that smooths the process out a little bit. Yeah, no ads playing, it's pretty yeah. good. Yeah, pretty good. <laughs> Awesome. So fantastic work, everyone. I think we'll move on to the next awesome. component. And we will potentially be coming back to that as well later on. But let's kind of deep dive a little bit in terms of the technical aspects of Miro. So as we've seen, we have the toolkit, um, the toolbox, I suppose, on the left. And we have the different elements. So we've got the templates, we've got the text. I think you're all familiar with the sticky note functions now. 
arrows, there's even the option to draw. So if you want to draw freehand something, then feel free to do so. Um, so a, a lot of really cool functions also in terms of um, adding comments, as we've seen, um, but also a few other things that are of interest. So for example, um, it also has a built-in function to actually upload files directly into the board. Um, so rather than having all of your files elsewhere, you can have them integrated within the one board. Um, so essentially making it a one-stop shop for you for the project that you are working on. Um, and that could be, for example, literature that you're reviewing, having the sources directly built in and things like that. Um, in terms of our GIFs, I know that might be a very big um, question on the top of your mind. We just go straight into Google image search. So it's a really good integration where you can just jump straight in and look for whatever GIF you might want or whatever image um, you might require. And it's as simple as just popping it straight in there. Great. Um, also in terms of, there's also icons that we can include in there. Really can search for whatever you may need. And it's just a way of visually presenting your ideas in a way that's um, quite easy and really intuitive for everybody else to understand also. But if we look at setting up a board, so that process in itself, what we might do, I might just um, duplicate this and that's, I can come back to it. Um, but essentially what I can do is, so this um, button here this is essentially like on your iPhone, it's your home button. So just go straight in there. And then all you really need to do is, so it's great to see all of your, all of your initials and all of our collaborators here within our uh, Miro workshop. But all you really need to do is just click on that new board. So we'll just go example, and we'll just go create and share. In terms of creating that new board, and then from here, um, Mira actually prompts you to essentially, you, you have the option of creating a blank board or you have the option of really choosing your use case. So understanding what you hope to achieve by using Miro. So be it um, a way for you to structure your meetings or to create workshops. So including things like icebreakers, ideation and things like that or if it's a matter of you're looking at it for research and design, so user testing um, components like that, or if you are wanting your Miro board to be a strategic tool. So um, that includes templates like things like Gantt charts um, and elements like that. So whatever you really, or almost whatever you want is at, at your disposal here. Um, but I might just um, take us back to our initial workshop. And we can kind of go into um, the different templates and what they're good for. So for the meetings and the workshops, the icebreakers um, already give, give you a pretty good foundation. Um, so it doesn't really require you to do too much work um, uh, unless you, know, you do want to come up with a very interactive idea like picking your mythical creature. Um, but otherwise, yeah, so for the meetings and the workshops, uh, an example, a really good one is um, setting up a meeting agenda. So it's essentially a template where you can have the topic of discussion, the location, your time and date, um, and essentially have everybody pop in and um, start to populate that. In terms of if your purpose is for ideation or brainstorming, um, there's all sorts of different um, structured problem solving templates that you can use. So for example, the how, now, and wow matrix. So um, populating in terms of some features that you think are really well for um, ideating for a new product development or product design. Um, and in terms of understanding uh, lean methodologies or agile workflows, um, there's all sorts of co um, digital collaboration tools, one of which is the Kanban wall. And this one's um, qu quite a cool one as well in terms of um, being able to prioritize or move a couple of things around. All you need to do is just um, add a new card. And again, you can um, type in, so what we'll have to do later on today is organize mythical creatures. And I might just 
assign that one to Chelsea because she's the expert. I don't really have too much experience with mythical creatures myself. And then we want to set the deadline, for example, when that's due by. And then we can also add it to a tag. For example, I can just say organizing and then create. So th this was um, an existing template, but obviously you can choose to have it um, not be pre-filled. And then again, that's one of those things. Once that's done, we can just get Chelsea to move it across to the done section. So showing us um, what's in the backlog, what we have left um, that's in progress for the week, for example, um, or what's done um, for the different teams as well. So really kind of lives up to the purpose of Miro as a collaboration tool, that one. Um, in terms of strategy and planning, so there's all sorts of uh, different templates in terms of prioritizing next steps um, for the business or, for example, for your own research. Um, th this one in particular is a business model or um, known as the Lean Canvas in terms of identifying um, who, who your key partners might be, um, your channels when you're actually looking to release um, a new product or a new innovation, so reaching those customers. Um, so really living up to the role of Miro for both industry and for research in terms of analysis and things like that. And today we'll really be going into detail in terms of the mapping and diagramming. So um, Chelsea has a bit of experience in terms of freehand, I suppose, diagramming. Um, uh, mind mapping, sorry, but there's also a lot of pre-existing um, templates that you can choose from and almost populate it from there rather than um, creating them up from scratch. So um, that functionality of the concept map is really good and very intuitive again. So it's just in terms of you can just add in another, another stream, have a bit of a play around in terms of um, that, that process itself too. So in terms of the sharing of projects and boards, um, it's really as simple as just clicking the share button. So one of the things, um, I think that's another, another one we forgot to lock. <laughs> we all, almost, almost made it, but it's okay. Um, so the sharing, sharing functionality, um, it's important, I suppose, to distinguish between um, inviting someone to have view access in comparison to inviting someone to have edit access. And that kind of comes back to what the purpose of your use of Miro really is. So if you're really just wanting to, I suppose, sense check something with um, some external stakeholders, then view access might be the best way to go about it. Um, so that would just end up creating a link that you can share for everybody or edit access um, like everybody has right now. Everybody can um, have input, add comments um, and really collaborate. So looking at actually sharing findings and um, communicating everything. So there's the export function just here, just up at the top of the screen. And there's a, um, the three main ways to go about it is either saving as an image. So it's almost like a snipping tool. So as we've all used before, and um, the premium version lets you um, save an image in quite high resolution um, compared to the, the free version is, I suppose, a, a bit of a lower quality, but um, still gets the job done. Um, you can also actually save something as a template. So saving something as a template, um, which we'll go over as well in a little bit more detail, if it's something that you, you're proposing to use again and again, saving it as a template is um, a good way to go about things. Um, so to allow you to kind of uh, use, it, use it whenever you need. And then exporting something as a PDF, you have something here called, um, they're different frames. So um, essentially they're different pages in a book. So when you're exporting, exporting something as a PDF, you really, um, all, all you need to do is press the export button and um, just press the save button, but you do want to make sure that you do have these frames around everything um, to ensure that you are getting um, everything that you want in the PDF rather than having that there's no way to encapsulate the entire board. It's almost like printing off, printing off pages. All right, we'll also just have a quick look at the um, just the free versus the premium features. 
Um, so as you can see here, I, I, the main differences that kind of jump to mind are um, differences in the exporting functions. So the higher resolution versus, I suppose, the smaller file size, but also the interaction components. So um, things like voting and the timers and that collaboration is pretty much um, a key feature of the premium accounts. Um, but I, I personally still have just, just the free version. So I have access to three boards and um, still for my purposes is really good. But now I'm just jumping onto the premium version for this workshop. So do you guys have any questions in terms of um, what, we've, what we've covered so far? Happy to monitor both chats just in case. Might just check over there. Is this Prezi based on a template? Is a question. That is a good question. So there are presentation templates that you can use as well. So they kind of come up with um, just the squares. I think I, there definitely are. We've def um, just gone in and customized everything in terms of choosing the color palette um, and taking it from there. So it is really, I suppose, bare bones, and you just make it what you want. Um, I might just interject there in that um, you can definitely like use templates for presentations to achieve something like this, um, but it's not really necessary. Um, instead, what you can do is you can just create frames and there's a button here down bottom left presentation mode that allows you to make it look like a PowerPoint presentation. So it goes full mode. And if you've done it correctly, like set up the slides sequentially, haven't gone back, added something, you can actually like click through the slides as if it were a presentation, which is pretty cool. Yeah. We worked very iteratively, I would say, and jumped back, added things, so it didn't quite work for this presentation. But if you know from the outset what each frame should have and you added them each sequentially, you can achieve the same outcome for sure. Um, uh, what does no private boards in premium mean? So that kind of comes into understanding that hierarchy. So when we were, I suppose, sharing and trying to figure out the lay of the land, um, that kind of comes into understanding the difference between a project and a board or a project and a team. Yeah. Um, so basically, I do know that there is a limitation in the premium one where especially if you're not too comfortable with setting up projects, boards, and all that kind of stuff in between. Um, I think that participants may be given access in your um, other boards that you've done. So if they went and clicked on Miro here or um, the project like there, they can see what other boards you're working on, um, which is, you know, a bit of a problem if you do have like a big um, presentation like this. So that's why we did it off my premium account because then it inhibits that access and you can really select where they see it. But if it's just a uh, let's jump on, have a conversation all on Zoom and you know have this going as if it were a whiteboard, it really isn't a problem um, to be honest. I'll jump into the other question about the presentation mode. So we're happy to actually have a look. So as you can see here that that's essentially it. So it moves across um, it has, has the buttons, has the pre, um, present, make it go automatically and things like that. But yeah, just like Chelsea said, um, it, it does depend if you've placed the frame sequentially. So these ones flow on from each other. Um, otherwise, potentially some frames are at the end or at the beginning, but that's a little demo of the presentation mode as well. Um, and then referencing, um, kind of continuing on from the last question, um, if I logged in without QT ID, it seems like all people can see each other's boards. Is it possible to hide those and make them private? Um, my recommendation is just because I take privacy and stuff quite seriously in terms of I like to see who's got access to what. Um, I create um, different projects for um, different boards essentially. So I go a bit overboard um, in terms of, you know, for the mirror workshop, I had a whole project folder dedicated to the workshop so that even if I have other boards, they're not in there. Um, so I would say that's your way of mitigating accidentally sharing um, or giving access to other people and that you just share um, that board within that location is probably your sure. best bet. And there is also a way you can also see your active users. So 
I'll just make sure I'm still sharing that. I think I am. And if we just go up onto my account, so if we go in here, pop into the settings, and there's a way for me to see my active users. So um, right now in the teaching one, um, the team admin is Chelsea. She has full access. She's the one that um, has the premium account, whereas I'm a member, my last activity um, and things like that as well. So um, that's another aspect that you can see. Okay, so just um, everything. Also, um, just following up on that, um, if Alex had created the, um, if I was operating out of Alex's account, um, in that, you know, there's the um, kind of higher order. Um, let me zoom back so I get the terminology right. <laughs> um, if I was operating out of Alex's team, so say it wasn't teaching, which is where it's located, say it was something else, um, her, because she doesn't have premium, we wouldn't be able to use the premium features. But because I have applied a premium account to that team, Alex now can suddenly use the premium just features. Just riding on her. Right, and access. Uh, I'm going to open, and there's going to be so many new boards yeah. that you've created <laughs> into my account. <laughs> um, just clarify that. And also, another um, question from Mariam How can you deal all active users at the same time? For me, the bulk feature doesn't seem to work. Oh, I mean, delete. How can you delete all active users at the same time? Um, so, in terms of seeing the active users, um, if that's right. So in terms of um, seeing the other users, it's just a matter of going into the settings and um, team profile. So profile settings, and then we also have other two users have access in this team. Yeah. Um, and I think that, yeah, there is a possibility to, I suppose, revoke access, but yeah, this is from my account, so I can't revoke my own or the access of the admin, so. Yeah, I do believe that it's quite uh, a manual process, uh, Marion, in that, you know, when I had all my students, um, they shared all of their folders, their teams with me one by one, and I had to go through every single one and leave the team once I finished marking their work. And like, you, it's, you'd think there'd be a, a more streamlined way of going about it, but currently there isn't. Um, I will say that in my, with my interactions with Miro as a company, when I did actually get premium access, so I got it also know, like you can get it for free um, under an educational um, kind of uh, deal. Um, when I was interacting with them, I realized that they're probably quite a um, small and very um, private team in that I was interacting with an actual person trying to set it up. So I think they're still adding more features as we go. So hopefully along the line, they'll add a bit of an easier mechanism to remove people from boards um, in that way. Awesome. Well, we might jump into a break at the moment, maybe five minutes. Um, if that suits everybody and I'll put on, I might mix it up, maybe move away from smooth jazz. We'll see what else we're feeling. Um, but in the meantime, feel free to have a bit of a play around. We've included here a bit of a sand pit. You can um, feel free to, yeah, just, I suppose, demo a lot of the features that we've spoken about and we'll see you back in five minutes. That's all good. And we'll be monitoring the chat as well. So feel free to send through any more questions or anything like that.